So um, the idea is that you get a resultant, the, uh, to get a resultant applied on the charge that is on B2. This sign, uh, this symbol that you see uh, right here, uh, the symbol, this one right here, represents uh, the prefix micro. Okay, so it's this symbol. It is the same, just the prefix micro and the uppercase that is Coulomb. So basically, it's micro Coulomb, the entire name. Now, um, and what we need to do is, as a first step, <coughs> sorry, we need to analyze if the um, if on this particle the kind of forces that are acting are attraction or repulsion okay so it's going to be applied on b2 so i'm arranging this better and let's see Let's see. Now it's better. Okay, I'm going to start from here. From this particle here, I'm going to analyze these two. The two of them have different signs, which means that it's going to be attraction. And the attraction is going to look like, like the two particles want to be together. So, Imagine that this particle want to be together with B2, okay? So that would be the first force. And this first force, then I'm going to call it, okay? So here we have attraction. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to make it shorter, okay, like this. To establish the difference. Now. Okay, this is going to be a, what I know as the force between B1 and B2, and B okay? But I'm just going to call it force 1. Now, I will continue the, with this force right here. I'm going to analyze these two particles. Because the two have same signs, that means that it's going to be a repulsion, okay? A repulsion means that... The particles want to be apart. Okay, so right now I have another force right here. Force, I'm gonna call it A2 B2. Okay, and it's going to be my second force. Now, I will analyze uh, these two, okay? Because the two of them have different signs, that means that attraction will occur. And attraction means that these particles want to be together, okay? And since I'm, I'm working in the same space than before, this one, I'm going to use a different color. Different color because, well, you know the reason. Yes, I can put two forces over there, like that. I have a mistake here in the name. It is between B2 and C2. Okay, because this is a repulsion and the pink one is attraction. These two forces are attracted because they are opposite, but these two are repelled because they have the same sign. Okay, these are repelled because they have the same sign. Then I continue with this one here, the one below. Opposite signs means attraction. So 
it's going to be like this. The particles want to be together. Like this. Okay? So I'm going to call this my force um, B3, no, B2, B3. Okay? And this is going to be my third force. And I leave this always in the... As, as the last force, this one, because it's like they are in, in a diagonal, okay? So this one is going to have components. So take a look to what I'm going to do. I'm going to trace a line between the two particles. This line, trust me, it's not very important, but I'm going to do it. So I have this line, I'm even going to use a different color, because I don't want it to be too visible, but just see this, okay? I'm going to analyze the two particles, A1 and B2, okay? I'm going to analyze these two particles. So what happens? They have the same kind of charge. So. What I need to be doing is I need to put the direction of the force. And this force, because it is same sign, is going to be repulsion. Imagine like this imagine like these particles want to be apart. Now I'm gonna use a different color for this force because it's a very different force. I'm going to use green. So take a look. My particles, my charges want to be apart. Okay, they don't want to be closer. They want to be as far as possible. So you trace, as you can see, with this, you are able to, to visualize the direction of the forces. They want to be apart. They want to go as far as possible. So what I do is I'm going to arrange my force right here. And I'm going to look the angle. Again, I will trace a force right here in the middle. Okay, with this you should be um, you should be able to, to visualize <clears throat> the angle better. Okay, here you kind of notice that you have a triangle that is being formed right here. Take a look. Here you notice that you have a triangle. And that's the triangle that you're going to use to get the hypotenuse and the angle. Now, the angle that I'm going to look for, remember what I said the other day in class. The angles are, <clears throat> they can be transmitted in opposite, in opposite directions. Like, for example, because here I have, I know it's in here I have, my triangle, okay, I am looking for this angle right here because I want to know this angle over there. This angle here is going to help me to know this angle over here. And this is the angle that I need to get the components of this force. Sorry about the mess, but I just want that you visualize what I'm doing, okay? So, you have your kind of your triangle already drawn over here. So I totally recommend to draw a triangle. 
I'm using a different color and I know that it's going to look messy but remember I'm going to take it apart too so my triangle is going to look like something like this and the angle that I'm going to look for is this one because this angle is going to give me the angle that I need for my force, okay? So far so good? Are we getting the idea of the triangle? That's the most important step. So, I'm going to look for this angle. If I'm looking for this angle, this side right here is opposite to my angle. In this side in the bottom is adjacent to my angle. Okay? So the adjacent is X and the opposite is the Y component. Now, I'm taking my triangle apart. What I have in a vertical, I mean, what do I have? What is my opposite side? How much does it measure? How much does the opposite side measure? Do you want me to explain or do you want me just to do the exercise? 0.3 meters. 0.3 meters. So in this side, I have 0.3 meters. In the adjacent side, which is this one right here, I have how much? Here. 0.4. 0.4 meters. Okay. And with this, I should be able to get the hypotenuse and, more importantly, the angle. Okay. So, my hypotenuse, I'm going to call it with R. I can call it R1, R2, or whatever. Okay? Because this is going to be my force force. I'm going to call it R4. Okay? Porque esta es mi fuerza 4. I didn't name it. The other ones have names, okay? But this one I didn't. This is the force that is coming from A1 to B2. And I'm gonna call it the force four, okay? So, right now, I will get all the distances, okay? So this is going to be R4. And I'm gonna get it with a hypotenuse. It's gonna be 0 0.3 square plus 0 0.4 square. How much is this? How much is this? 0 0.5. 0 0.5. 5. Exactly 0 0.5 meters. Okay, this is R4 equals 0 0.5 meters. But I'm also going to get my angle. Is our tangent of the opposite over the adjacent side, which is equal to the arc tangent of opposite to the angle that is 0 0.3 divided by adjacent that is 0 0.4. How much is this? 36.86. 86 or 87? 87. Okay. So I get the data. Okay. I'm going to get my distances. I have the distance for the force one. Esta es mi fuerza uno. ¿Qué distancia tengo? Aquí. What distance I have? This is the data. I need the data. 
I need to be organized. That's why I put it like that. So you have to see the distance between the forces. I have my particle here and the other particle here that involves the first force. What is the distance that I have in total? What is this distance? Participate in my class, please. 0 0.3 meters. 0.3 meters. Okay, R2 is going to be the distance for the force 2. The force 2 this one here okay and this is a repulsion force that is coming between c2 and b2 so it's the distance between c2 and b2 what is the distance i have here the more time you take i won't be able to What distance I have? Guys, see the name of the forces. Okay? So that involves C2 and B2. What distance I have between the two of them? I know what the distance zero point, zero point six. is. Zero point, I know what the distance is. 0 0.6. Now the distance 3 is, it says, that is between A2 and B2, or between A2 and B2. What distance I have over there? Zero point four. And in R4 is the one of the, the hypotenuse that I just got, and is 0.5 meters. If I have my distances written like this, I should be able to calculate my forces again in an organized manner. Okay, so with this, now I'm going to get the forces. I have four forces, so it's going to be like this. Okay. <laughs> okay, una, dos, tres. This is four. This is five. Tengo cinco fuerzas. Ya decía yo que queda fácil este ejercicio. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is going to be five. And cuatro is esto. And cuatro in a eh, aquí between the force. La cuatro gesta sería between this one and this one. What distance I have? Zero point two. Okay, zero point two meters. Okay, now that I have everything. I am able to get the five forces, okay, from Coulomb's law. And in here, you're going to need your help. I'm going to copy the formulas, and I want that you calculate uh, the rest of the forces, okay? 
Esto sería force 1, force 2, force 3, force 4, force 5. Can you see? Can you see? Because that's how I'll, I'll write it. Okay. The force 1, I have it between B1, B2. Okay. Aquí está. B1, B2, the number 1. Entonces, yo voy a poner aquí. Ustedes ya saben que son las charges las que voy a poner ahí. Y aquí voy a poner the distance 1 raised to the second power. Aquí voy a poner. The value of KC, that is 8.9875. Times 10 to the ninth power Newton per meter per Coulomb square. Este valor se repite. Okay. Okay. Sería la carga B1, que sería 5 microcoulombs, que sería 5, times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. La otra que sería... As I told you, here it doesn't really matter if you write the sign or not. The sign matters here when you when you put all the when you put all the um, all the forces. Okay, here is where the sign matters, not here. So you can write them positive here. van a hacer esto en su calculadora porque quiero que lo hagamos súper rápido en your calculator van a poner estos valores y van a multiplicar por 4 y 5 Divided by the first R, that is 0.3 meters. Okay. Aquí solo estoy colocando la fuerza esta, ok, the charge of B2. Todas estas van a ser B2. ¿Por qué? Porque toda la resolución la estamos sacando en base a B2, ok. Esta es B2 en B2 en B1, ahora la fuerza 2, that is this one, es entre C2 en B2. Entonces aquí voy a multiplicar B2, B2, ok, this. La fuerza 3 es, es esta, entre A2, B2, ¿ok? Entonces yo voy a multiplicar B2, A2, y voy a dividir entre la distancia R3 to the second power. Esta cuarta fórmula va a ser between B2 y B3. La 4, la fuerza 4 es B2, B3. Entonces aquí... 
B2, B3, y voy a dividir entre R4 to the second power. Y la última es between A1 and B2. ¿Ok? Y la voy a dividir entre R5 to the second power. Y aquí voy a poner solo los valores que me faltan. Vayan haciendo la primera y la segunda. Did you do the first one? <clears throat> I know that this is the, like the most difficult part, okay? Because you have to write all this, but in your calculator is easy, okay? In your calculator is going to be an easy part, easy process. Usted más, eh, todo, porque todo esto se repite. Si ustedes se fijan, estos primeros datos se repiten. The only values that are changing are this one. The only values that change, that have changed, are this one and this one, this one and this one, this one and this one. So you can type the, the rest of the formula and just in your calculator change those values, okay, to make it easier. Es como dejar grabada la la, la, la fórmula de ahí solo reemplaza eh, eh, en vez de 5 exponential 6 solo van a cambiar el 5 por el 3 divided by 0.3 how much did you get in the first one I got 2 newton Rounded. Did you get it? Yeah. Okay. How much did you get in the second one? Zero point twenty nine newton. Zero point three newton rounded because it's zero point two nine nine nine. Okay, so you round it. Two point three because it's easier. How much do you get in the in the third one? One, two, 1.80, sir. 1.80. Rounded is 1.80. How much do you get in the in the fourth one? Two point seven. Two point seven newton. How much do you get in the third in the last one? Zero point eighty six. Zero point eighty six newton. Okay. And with this, what you do after is you take the particle apart and you draw it again. I'm going to put this apart. I don't need it. So I'm going to draw my particle again. Okay, and I will include all the forces. So I know that up, 
I have my first one. I know that here I have my first two. I also have my first three. I have my first four. This one down. And this one, the green one that is that it has a direction. This is my four five. And I include the information about the forces. And of course I will include the angle that I obtain. 36.87 degrees. And this sketch is important because then we're going to work with a table of components. Replace the forces by the values, okay? 2.3.8, 1 1.8, 2.7, and then to put them here as a vector. Okay, I have here the particle, I have here the angle of my force 5, and I put all the values of the forces in each, like that. And I put all in here, in the table of the components. You know that this is going to be my force 1, my second force, my third force, my fourth force, and my fifth force. So here um, the verticals don't have x components, so here nothing and nothing. The y component, remember this, if it goes up is positive, if it goes down is negative. Okay, so because this one goes up, it's going to be positive, and this is 2 newton, so it's going to be plus 2 newton. The second force is 0.3 Newton. Okay, 0.3 Newton. Because it's a horizontal force, has nothing. In here, in the Y component, you don't write nothing. And because it goes to the left, remember this. To the left is negative, to the right is positive. So to the left is negative. 0.3 Newton. The third force, it goes to the left and is 1.8 meters. So it is 1.8, sorry, Newton. It goes to the left, the left is negative, so 1.8 Newton. The force number four is going down, it measures 2.7 Newtons. And because it's going down, it's going to be negative 2.7 Newton. And this one is 0 0.86. But as you can see, it has components because it, have an, it has an angle. Okay? It has an X component. like this, this is x, and a y component, like this, this is y, okay? So my x component is going to the right, it's going to be positive, so this is going to be 0 0.86 cosine of 36.87, and in y is going to be 0 0.86 sine of 36. 0.87 degrees. I'm going to zoom in now that table. Now take a look right here. Because x is going to the right, it's going to be positive. Because y is going down, it's going to be negative. And in your calculator, after you do that, you get 
I I got 0 0.69 and in the other one I get 0 0.52 these are Newton and Newton okay so what I do after is I'm gonna I'm gonna add all these values okay and in the X component, what I get is negative 0.3 minus 1.8 plus 0 0.69, I got negative 1.41 Newton. In Y, I get 2 minus 2.7 minus 0.52. And it gives me negative 1.22 newtons. I get a resultant here in the calculator. I get negative 1.41 square plus. Guys, do not miss this symbol here. It is an addition. It doesn't multiply. Plus, okay, 1.22 newton to the second power. Here is negative. In total, I get a resultant of 1.86 Newton. And my angle is equal to arc tangent of y, negative 1.22 Newton, divided by x. I do this in the calculator and I get 40.87 and these are degrees. And with this we finish. As I told you for this quiz you really don't need to sketch the answer, but that will be it.